Hey, thank you. Uh, last speaker before lunch, if, you, if you're not hungry, you can stay here. If you're hungry, you can go, okay? Um, I'm gonna talk about foliar nutrient uptake. I've given some of this uh, presentations before, so, but I've added to it because we got some more data. Um, I'll just uh, start out by trying to hit this in the get this first slide. And I guess the, the first slide is, is, why does this HLB infected tree look so good? And, and you already heard uh, uh, Dr. Rouse, Bob Rouse talk about Mari Boyd's orange hammock growth. And uh, this is one of the trees out there. And this was taken in uh, uh, July of 2011. And uh, that's a Valencia tree and uh, it looks pretty good for being HLB infected. And I, I went out there and wondering what's going on. Why are you having, why is he having success at producing fruit and growing these decent trees when he had uh, close to 100% infection of HLB? Um, so I started taking, I asked him if I could take some samples and I guess my, my primary thing was to take samples from but not only his grove, but also from some of the plots that, that Bob Rouse was doing at, at, at the Immokalee Research Center. And uh, this just shows part of the sampling dates of September 10, 11, and uh, we've gone into 12 and now into 13, taking some more samples. We've taken samples of leaf petioles, midribs, fruit bearing stems, and fruit columellas. We've embedded them for electron microscopy, is what we did first and actually for light microscopy work first and then EM later. I took some photographs and looked at these things and, and I wanted to know was these trees look so good there's got to be something going on in the phloem system and, and Craig just got through talking about the phloem system of, of HLB affected trees and indeed uh, you, you um, seeing this type of, 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 of fruit yield and uh, I'll, this picture I want to show you for sure and I'll point both sides. We took sim samples from these, and this is, if you look real close, you can see the HLB typical symptoms in these leaves that are right off the fruit of, uh, that are decent in size of these, these Valencias. So what's going on was my question. And so we did look at some of the, the, the samples out at, out at both uh, Bob Rouse's plots and at Mari Boyd's early on in, in, in 2010 and 11. And uh, we started seeing, uh, you know, the xylem tissue looks really good, of course, it should look good. Uh, some of the phloem tissue doesn't look great, but there is some open phloem. The parenchyma look good, looks good, and the, uh, the, uh, some of the phloem fiber cells look fine, too, which they should look okay in, in this disease. Um, but you do see some open phloem. You don't see a total collapse situation, which I'll show you in a little while. And the same thing, and not on every tree was the same. Some trees looked uh, with symptoms, looked more collapsed. Uh, but there's still some phloem in here that look functional to me and wondered what's going on. Or is he, by his nutrient applications, producing new phloem? New phloem that was actually uh, uh, functional. And if you compare that to a tree like this that's untreated uh, with HLB, and you can see that the phloem system is just really degenerated, collapsed, necrotic, and in bad shape. And then we started looking at, at little flush tissues off of some of these trees with no symptoms, but were PCR positive. So PCR said that these things did contain liberal bacter asiaticus, the bacterium. We started looking at those and we could see uh, some real pretty looking phloem. All the tissues looked really good. I uh, didn't see any plugging materials of anything, even though they were PCR positive in these young, young flushes. So something he's doing, he's doing right, and, and Bob was doing right at the research center with these nutrient applications. Uh, the same thing with minor symptoms in the tree. We saw a little bit more plugging in relationship to the minor symptoms, uh, but again, the phloem system still looked in pretty good shape, uh, even they were all PCR positive. Uh, something with more advanced symptoms, uh, you had more necrosis occurring, uh, but again, uh, the, uh, the phloem system was not totally blocked, not totally collapsed like I showed you in that previous photograph with that were untreated. Start looking at some of the stem tissue, and the stem tissue uh, wanted to find out if, if what, what was happening was, is are you also being able to flow nutrients out of these uh, 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 treated leaves, photosynthate out of these to some of the, the, the uh, uh, fruit and some of the developing tissues. And the, the stem tissues look very good. They look very open, very clean, even though the, the leaves off this stem tissue had symptoms. Uh, and if you look at these tissues under the electron microscope, this is something that's untreated, HLB infected, and you get this real necrosis, uh, starch you could see in the tissues, and necrotic tissues. Uh, phloem does not look good here. 
And if you got a healthy tissue, it should look like this. So my question was, on this type of tissues, what's going on? And uh, so I started looking at some of Bob Rouse's plots that you've already seen some pictures of his and some of the nutrients that he's applied and uh, out at Southwest, Re uh, Southwest Re Rec Center. And, um, oops, got to point out this way. Nope. Not good. So we looked at some of Bob Rouse's trees first like this, and the, all the ones were from Mari Boyd's first. And Rouse's tissues, uh, again, you could see some uh, phloem tissues that looked like they were being produced in here that looked fairly good. Some of the older tissues that were, because this is the, the cambial tissues in here. In the cambium tissue, you got to remember, produces the xylem inside and phloem outside. So these tissues were looking better. Uh, this has happened to be on an untreated tree, though. And, uh, but you see still in the necrosis, and these young tissues look like they were, you know, starting to collapse, starting to, to go, like Craig said, a looking a little oblong in shape. Uh, holy cow, what's going on here? Oh, let's have a couple of skips in there. And some of his treated tissues uh, looked a little bit better, not as much necrosis, uh, but there was still some, and the tissues still, still looked that little oblong in shape. Uh, however, these trees were treated and, and, the, and the tissues look good and they are all, like Bob said, PCR positive. So, the question I asked myself was, is, but is this phloem that we see being produced functional? And uh, how would we determine that? So the, there were methods that had been used with other plant materials studying phloem uptake or translocation and a lot of this used a fluorescent dye that you would apply to the tissues and see if the, the dye was translocated from source leaves to sink leaves. And this has been done. So we tried this in the greenhouse with uh, uh, the, the Dr. Fan Jing. He was a, a student with Fred Gemitter and he started looking at some of this first and he showed me this technique that he was using for some other studies, not for this type of study. And so we started using it to find out what's going on in these nutrient treatments to see if we had uh, actually good flow and movement from some leaves, from source leaves to sink leaves, now leaves that are young developing tissues as well as developing fruit. And I want to give you some more definition of the source sink model. Functionally, a plant can be divided into a source and a sink. And sources are parts where net, net fixation of carbon dioxide occurs, like mature leaves. Uh, sinks are sites where assimilates are stored or used. And then there's the allocation of assimilates between, or photosynthates between the plant parts that occur via transport in the phloem system. And so in order for a, a tree or any kind of plant to grow, you've got to have this, this source sink model uh, functioning. Herbaceous plants, things like, like tomatoes and, and other vegetable crops, uh, they accumulate these materials in source leaves during the photo, photo period during the daytime and evacuate them at nighttime. But citrus leaves have a system that's different. It doesn't do this as a diurnal system, so it's a different system, and I'm not going to go into the total explanation of that this time. But also, the other thing that occurs with citrus is that I read that annual changes occur in the carbohydrate levels and re represent a combination of developmental and seasonal trends, meaning as we go through the season and we're, we're putting on flowers and fruit and new roots and different things different times of the year, the demands change. And there's also a seasonal variation. It's exerted by the using to develop, any of these developing leaves and shoots and the reproductive parts, which are flowers and fruits. And they represent sinks. So I'm, I'm telling you this now because I want you to remember this as I start talking more about what we found in, in using this fluorescent dye that, that I'm going to talk about. Um, the other thing I want you to talk, think about is, is what happens in the failure of a source sink model. Well, plants may have adverse environmental conditions. And, 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 and Arnold Schumann talked about the environmental conditions, meaning uh, nutrient uptake, nutrient, uh, 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 lack of nutrients, the proper nutrients, uh, soil stresses, environmental stresses, and diseases that inhibit this source to sink process. And I think what we're seeing in HLB is this inhibi inhibition of this source sink model. Because HLB is a phloem disease, infection by Candidatus labrobacter asiaticus, and a production of collapsed necrotic phloem, that's, that's so, what we know so far, that is not functional. And that tissue cannot be functional because I showed you that EM picture with that total necrosis going on. That tissue is not functional. 
So anyway, we started looking at some of Bob Rouse's trees, and we have this fluorescent thing, and I'd love to show you some fluorescent pictures, but uh, I'm going to flip through this and just talk to him about it. But basically, this is fluorescent dye. You can apply this dye in, in some little braided spots on leaves, and you can do this in the laboratory, and the fluorescent dye, uh, with it, if you apply it to an HLB-infected leaf that has no treatment, it basically will not move this fluorescent dye out of the spot or moves very little bit of it out of the spot. But you apply it to a healthy leaf, and within four hours, the, 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 the material gets moved out into the leaf, especially if it's a source leaf that's moving photosynthate assimilates to sinks. Okay? So you're looking at, we're looking at whether these source leaves are being functional or not. So you look at this fluorescent material, and, and it will move out of a healthy leaf, but it won't move out of an HLB leaf. So then the question is, what happens with a treated leaf? It's treated with nutrients. So we've looked at, we looked at Marty Boyd's Orange Hammock Grove, and we looked at Bob Rouse's, and we've also done some work at Lake Placid. And it's very interesting to find out that, like at Orange Hammock, that the, the nutrients are moving out of the leaves. In fact, some of the leaves look almost the same as healthy leaves. Now you could say, are these leaves actually really healthy off the tree? Did I choose a tree that was not HLB infected? Well, sorry folks, I've also done PCR on those leaves and they're infected. They have PCR values that are positive. So it's positive for liberal factors. So the leaves are infected. Or do they have symptoms? Some of them do, some of them don't. But the photosynthate will move from a source to a sink, so it's moving out of those leaves. So that was kind of, we're kind of excited about that. And we've done some more testing over the, over the time that we've been, had some, some, some funding for this project. And as we do this, we find the same situation on some of the treatments that Bob's doing at, 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 at uh, Southwest Rec Center. We see some of the trees look really good and the photosynthate's moving out. Now, does this happen all the time? Well, no, it doesn't. It is, there is a seasonality that effect on this. And we're looking at that effect. Now, why is there a seasonality effect? Well, let's go back to that first slide that I showed you, and I actually had it in this presentation. But if you go back to that first slide, and I said that there were seasonal effects in the ability of this source sink model. And citrus is one of the plants that is listed as a, as a, as a variable plant. It doesn't always move photosynthate from, from source to sink 100% of the time. Because sometimes what happens is those leaves, uh, the, sinks, the sinks aren't there to have, in, in, in need of material to be moved because the sinks have turned into sources. And once a sink turns into a source, it doesn't, it's not re requiring materials to be moved to it, okay? But fruit are as they develop. So we've been looking at stems and other tissues. The other thing that was asked of us in this project was is could we quantitate this? Could we give you a number to show this? And we've been working on that and we've got, we, we, we bought, with your money, we bought a, a, a fluorescent plate reader. Now a fluorescent plate reader is much like an ELISA plate reader, but it reads fluorescent levels of fluorescent. You can use it as an ELISA plate reader. And, and you take a plate, much like an ELISA plate, a 96 well plate. I had a picture of that on here too. But the 96 well plate, um, we, we, we can take some of these spots that we do. We, let it, we, we put the fluorescent dye on. We let the material move or not move out of the spot. Take the spot, grind it up, because we know exactly how much material we put in the spot. So we grind that spot up and extract the dye and then put this in the plate and read the amount of, dot, read the amount of fluorescence that comes off of this compound. And uh, you just read it in the plate reader. And we found out that what happens is with HLB infected, there's very little material moving out. With a healthy material, with healthy, there's a lot of material moving out of the spot. So the, so the values are different. And we, we actually then we quantitate that into how many micrograms per mil of this material moved into the leaf. Now, we do know, we know where it moved? Not yet. We don't know if it moved all the way to the fruit or into the stem tissue, but we're looking at that as well. We can find out photosynthate that moves. No. This is one of Bob Rouse's trees. Next slide, please. Hey, there we go. These are the type of leaves that we look at, okay? We, we, and, and we're also looking at sample size of what's need to be done. These came off of, of one of Bob Rouse's trees. Uh, I call it BR5, and it's not his treatment five or anything. I had my own numbers. And then there's field trees at the bottom here. This is just a field HLB tree material, you know, that we, we collected probably out of his plots as well and healthy. Next slide, please. So we, we take this little, we, we make a little spot on the leaf. We got a little, little device that we make a spot that's one centimeter square, or actually a square, not a spot. And then we apply the material. And if you look at these, 
uh, we apply this fluorescent material. And like I told you, the HLB untreated material down here, after four hours, the spots are still pretty bright. The, the healthy material, it's gone. A little bit left here, but not a lot. So it moves out. But if you look at Bob Rouse's treatments, it's somewhere in between. So what does it tell me? It tells me that some of that functional, that phloem is functional in these source leaves that Bob's got that he's treated with one of these materials. And I'd have to look up BR5 is because I run everything blind. I don't want to know, I don't want to have any bias that I like his treatment number one or number two or number seven, okay? Next slide. Okay, let's look at some orange hammock pictures. Next slide, because we skipped a lot of Bob Rouse's slides. So I went down to orange hammock and did the same thing and you can see healthy at the top. And by the way, getting healthy material from the field is difficult nowadays. That's hard to find. Uh, BR MB4 is just a tree out in, 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 in the orange hammock grove that was, H, that was uh, positive for Librobacter, and a field sample that was positive, un, that was not treated from some of our blocks of trees at Lake Alfred. All the same cultivar. Next slide. Okay. Do I convince you that the field material doesn't move anything out that's not treated? The Amari Boyd treatment, or whatever he was doing down there, like Bob told you, is moving some material out. In fact, this one looks almost like the healthy one above it. So that flo that phloem's being, there's enough phloem being produced that's open and is moving materials out. It's moving some photosynthate out of those leaves. Next slide. Okay, there's some more. I, I put these in because there's, you can see the symptomatic leaves right there in the middle from, from orange hammock. Next slide. Same leaves treated, not quite as good as the other one. Did they get a good enough spray? Maybe not, but better than the field. Better than the field. And the healthies didn't move everything out for some reason. Next slide. Okay, you can see your symptomatic leaves. Next slide. Oh, good. Nothing moved out there, did it? Or it all moved out, one of the two. Next slide. Okay, and I said, can we measure the amount of dye taken up? And I already told you, yes, we use this microtiter plate method, and uh, we basically just uh, cut out the little glowing spots after four hours, then we, uh, we uh, run it through the, the, the fluorescent plate reader, we get a fluorescent value, which it, it gives you some kind of huge number, okay? Which means nothing. I wanna know how much material moved out. So all you do is you, you, you do run a standard curve, read it off the standard curve, subtract that of the material that's in the spot, that's what's moved out, right? Simple. Next slide. Please come up the next slide. Uh, next slide. My data slides didn't, didn't transfer over. Oh, there you go. There's one. That's actually supposed to be the next slide. So if we run healthy leaves and HLB leaves, can you all see those numbers? No? Too small? We're going to furnish binoculars next, next year. Uh, if you look at HLB leaves, the amount of material moved out is about 83 micrograms, and using healthy trees, it's about 247. So there's a significant m more material moved out in a healthy leaf. Next slide. Please come up. There we go. Yes. Okay. We actually sprayed these plants uh, at the research center, and you can see some healthy materials sprayed with water versus sprayed with a nutrient spray. Uh, uh, you move a little bit more of a nutrient with the nutrient spray, obviously the leaves are getting better treatment than the 240, but, but the, the uh, water sprayed HLB and the HLB nutrient leaves, the nutrients are about almost twice what the HLB water sprayed leaves are, which is not as good as what you're seeing with healthy, but you're still seeing an increase in the amount of photosynthate that's moving out in, that, in those, those, those uh, leaves, which is good, okay? So that means the fruit's gonna be a little bit bigger, hopefully. Next slide. This is kind of a time lapse because what I'm doing is I'm kind of increasing. I'm going to show you what happens. As you go through this, you get not as, not as good of, of, of values because of the fact that the leaves are changing from, from sources and they're not moving materials out because they're not being, the sinks have changed on these trees. And uh, end up water sprayed leaves, you know, those are pretty similar, a little bit better in the, the, uh, the healthy nutrient sprayed, of course. And then, again, not as good with the HLB sprayed leaves. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, this one, almost double again. Um, not quite, but the HLB, you do see more uh, the nutrient sprayed leaves, the more things moving out uh, into the leaves than you see into the HLB uh, ones with this water sprayed. 
Next line. Um, here again, we do this one in, in the uh, 31 12. This is all done in January. And you can see a difference in the, uh, the, the two down here. Now, are these statistically significant? I haven't run all that significant data yet on this. But there is, this is just the data that we've, we've been able to uh, accumulate so far. But you can see uh, that there's uh, some difference here. Next slide. Did I have the next slide? Yeah. Uh, this is January 2013 from Orange Hammock. Now, at Orange Hammock, we don't have any unsprayed. Everything's sprayed. Okay, so we don't have a, an untreated control. So I have to, I have to control, I have to use that with some, some other things that we've, uh, uh, like healthy greenhouse materials. Let's just look at the healthy greenhouse materials. 330 HLB nutrient sprayed fruit leaves. These are leaves that are directly like I showed you in that picture off the fruit. Uh, they're transporting 344, We're actually doing better my greenhouse leaves because my greenhouse aren't treated with anything except some uh, nutrients in the, in the pots. Uh, HLB sprayed mature leaves, 380, 328. Uh, HLB nutrient sprayed young leaves, 277. The HLB average was about 336, which is equal to my healthy leaves out of the greenhouse. So something good is going on with nutrient treatment leaves. Next slide. So what's happening? And I'll just conclude all this stuff. You know, my cytological results show that, that, that they're at both at Bob Rouse's as well as at the Orange Hammock Grove that there's an improvement of uh, treated trees, nutrient. Uh, obviously, more phloem is open as compared to the untreated HLB-affected trees. The same results, occurred, uh, of course, occurred at Orange Hammock. The fluorescent uptake test showed that the functional phloem in treated trees versus untreated, uh, but not as good as healthy. So we don't always get as good as healthy trees from the field, but it's still in a diseased tree. So that's, as a pathologist, I'm going to tell you that's, uh, that's the problem. Next slide. The fluorescent assay works well. However, there is some seasonal variability in how much dye moves. And I didn't get those slides up there, but there is some seasonal variability. Right now, we're finding not any good movement of things. And I think it's because that things are switching over in the, the sink leaves are switching over to become sources. So sources aren't moving as much material out. Um, we're gonna look at that. We're also looking at that on the basis of how many leaves need to be sampled. Uh, but reestablishing the source sink connection by producing new phloem for photosynthetic products to move is obviously good, and it, almost, it may also be good for the root systems of trees, and we don't know about that yet because it hasn't been sampled. Phloem may still degrade and be blocked. That's not to say that after, after you produce new phloem in these trees that that phloem system is not going to eventually collapse. But you, what you're trying to do is try to stay ahead of it by producing uh, new phloem. Next, next slide. We're currently working on a larger database, like I just said, for results, and I'm looking to see if we can do an on-tree uh, assessment of the phloem translocation. And you saw those fluorescent pictures, that light box, I'm just gonna take it to the field and do that light box in the field. Now, we, can, we can't, probably can't do the plate reader in the field to read those things, but I like just reading those light box readings because the light box probably tells me as much as the, the little values of micrograms per, per mil of, of um, dye added. Next slide, I think it's the last one. Ah, I wanna say my funding for this project came from the Citrus Research and Development Foundation and thank you gentlemen and ladies for your, your funding. And the current funding on this project ends June 30th. And I say that for a fact that, that uh, we're gonna be ending this project then, but I hope we're gonna carry on with some other projects with Dr. Schumann and Dr. Broderson and some other, other labs in letting them use this technique for some of their experiments. So that's all I've got.